So, there's a feature in DaVinci Resolve you're probably not using because I don't see many people using them at all. They're massively underutilized and they're actually incredibly useful. They're called referenced compositions. What do they do exactly? Well, they allow you to create these little presets which sit in your media pool and then you can really quickly apply them to a bunch of different clips on your timeline, which is handy, but it gets better. If you've changed your mind, you can really quickly just edit the referenced composition and that change will affect all of the clips with that composition applied on the timeline and it gets even better still. You can use these to create templates which affect multiple different clips. You can choose exactly how many clips are being applied, which means they're even better in some cases than using adjustment clips because an adjustment clip will affect everything, whereas these, you've got much more control. And for the final thing, if that wasn't enough, you can save them in power bins to use them in future projects. Now, if I was right, you've never heard of them and you've certainly never used them, let me know down in the comments below. Enough of all that, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to use them. So we're gonna kick things off with the picture in picture example. And I've got this example set up here. We've got our face cam on track number two, as you can see. And then underneath that, we've got a screen recording, video footage, gameplay, whatever it may be. Now you do want to set it up in this order. So you want your face cam footage on top and then your screen recording underneath. And then from there, it's dead easy. Click on one of your face cam clips, right click and click on the option, create referenced composition. I'll ask you to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this face cam. Let's go with top right for this example. And then we're gonna hit create. And then all that will happen is this new little icon will appear on the clip on the timeline. And within the media pool, you'll see your reference composition, face cam, top right, or whatever you called it. So then all we need to do is to jump in and actually make any changes we want to make. We can do that either by right clicking on the clip on the timeline and then go to open in the fusion page or simply double click on the reference comp within the media pool. So I'm gonna double click and we'll jump right into fusion. And then from here, you just make any changes you want to make. So we're doing a picture in picture face cam thing. So I'm gonna grab transform, which is this one here drag this onto my little line, give it a click, open up the inspector. Let's just resize this, move it over to the top right hand corner. Job done. Then if we jump back to the edit page on this one particular clip, we now have a top right picture in picture face cam thing. So then all you need to do is to apply it to any of the other clips you want to on the timeline. So to do that again, dead easy. Within the media pool, single click on that reference composition. So you get the little red box around it like I have here. And then simply go to one of your other face cam clips. So I've got this one here. We're gonna right click, and then we're gonna click this, link to referenced composition. And that's gonna link this clip with the composition we built on this clip. So both of these clips now have that same composition applied to them. If we go to any of the other clips, we right click and we link to reference composition. Boom, same thing. We now have our face cam in the top right hand corner. Now that on its own is kind of useful, to be honest, because you've made a quick composition, you've saved it into your media pool, and then you can just apply it to a bunch of clips on your timeline, which means they're all gonna be the same. But the real benefit is the fact that now we've got all of these different clips are being affected by the one singular fusion composition, which means if you change that one single comp, it will affect all the other clips. Unfortunately, doing that is also dead easy. You basically just do the exact same thing. So I could either right click on any of the clips that now have the little logo on them on the timeline and go to open in the fusion page, or we would double click on our face cam thing within the media pool, which would take us right back into fusion. So. Let's just do a different one. This is something that people doing face cam might like to see. So we're gonna hit shift and space to open up our select tool. We're gonna to search for transform, but we're gonna use this transform here. So the one without the XF and click, come on, click add. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll zoom out and we'll change the Y and the X. Now the reason this transform is really useful is because it has built-in cropping 
So if I wanted to kind of crop this a little bit, we could crop that and then move it over a little bit more, whatever we wanted to do. And it's also got edge rounding, so you could just round the edges so it looks a little bit nicer, change the shape, do all that sort of fun stuff. We're also going to open up the template, edit, effects. I've got a lot of effects, so I need to scroll right the way down, but near the bottom somewhere you will have this one called outer stroke. Grab that, drop that on your little line. That will give you your colored border and a drop shadow. And then you can come in here, change any of the settings, change the color, do all the things you want to do to get this looking exactly how you want it to. Then if we jump back to the edit page, all of the clips that had that linked reference composition now have those changes applied. Now just a couple of the last quick basics to cover before we move on. If you right click any of the clips on the timeline that are currently linked, there is an option to unlink, which will get rid of the reference composition and return it back to normal. If you have done a bunch of them on your timeline and you want to get rid of all of them at once, what you simply can do is delete the reference composition from within your media pool and that will delete the actual reference so all of your clips on the timeline will be reverted back to normal, which is all pretty neat. Now you can do more with this because you can actually create these templates using multiple clips at once, which is super useful if you're doing like a podcast and you want to make like a podcasty template with two people talking to each other, or if you want to do some fancy sort of split screen effects as well. So I'll show you those in a second, as well as how to save these into power bins. But first, I just need to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Motion VFX. Motion VFX creates some of the best plugins for DaVinci Resolve, and they have plugins for basically anything you could possibly need. If you're a YouTuber, you might want to take a look at MTuber 4. It's the YouTube creator's essential toolbox for DaVinci Resolve, containing 72 elements to make your work easier. There's everything from social media pop-ups to different titles and typography. There's handy little tools, transitions, logos, camera movements, backgrounds, effects, and overlays. Or if it's just titles you need, maybe take a look at the M Title Mega Pack, which contains 125 different animated titles for DaVinci Resolve. If you shoot over to the website, you can scroll through and take a look at each of the ones that are included in this M Title Pack. Or there's M Documentary, M Journey, M Music Video, M Keynote, M Tutorial, and basically anything you could ask for. So head over to Motion VFX to check out that full range of plugins for DaVinci Resolve simply by clicking the link down in the description below. Hmm. Right, let's have a look at how you do this using multiple different clips at once. Now it's actually very, very similar. So I've got these two kind of talking headshots here for a podcast or whatever. We need to stack them one on top of each other, just like we did before. But this time, what we can do is select both of those clips. So we just highlight them both. Then we right click and we do the same thing, create reference composition give it a name, I'm gonna call this one podcast. You'll only see the little icon appear on the top clip, but then you will see the podcast appear within the media pool. If we double click, so now we're in Fusion once again, but what you'll notice is we've got media in one and media in two, so it's pulled in both of these clips. Then we just need to make any changes we need to make. So let's move these merges out of the way a little bit. Let's grab the same transform tool we had before. And I'm going to put this down here on media in two, which I think is going to be our main guy. It is. So we can just change this. Let's zoom this out. Maybe give it a bit of a crop. Give this a bit of edge rounding and all that sort of thing. And then let's put this over on the right hand side. It's a bit small. We'll zoom it in. Something like that. Now here's an extra bonus tip for you. Because we want basically the other clip to be exactly the same, what we can do on your transform one node, if you right click, and go to copy, or of course you can use your keyboard shortcut. Then if you right click again, just in an empty space, you've got this paste instance, and that will paste an instance, basically it's a linked copy of that transform. If I hold shift, I can drag it onto this line and release. And now anything we do to this transform will actually be affecting both of those clips, which is useful, except for the fact that we can't see the one because it's under the other one. So we go to this instance transform, 
and then we can unlink any attribute we don't want to be copied. So in my case, it's position X. So I right click, come to D instance, and then I can just move this over here. And there we go. Now the benefit of that is if I go to the zoom, it will affect both still. Rotation will affect both. The position Y will affect both, but the position X is free to be moved wherever we like. So we can just get these nicely set up. If we also wanted to maybe put a drop shadow on these, let's grab a drop shadow. And we'll drag this onto this line here, holding shift to make sure it's nice and linked. And if we wanted to get really fancy, although I don't recommend adding text to this because you may need to change the text for each individual instance, but let's just put a text down here as well. And we'll call this podcast and maybe change the layout to something like that. Jump back to the edit page. And now we've got this little podcast kind of template that's ready to go. If we were to delete these clips from our timeline, anytime we want, we grab this one, we grab this one, slightly different order this time. We give our podcast a click. We right click our top clip. So you make sure you do it on the top clip like we did with our face cam. Then we go to link to reference composition and boom, both of our clips are now in the right place with our podcast text underneath. Super, super useful. Now, the other benefit to these, again, I hinted at at the beginning, is because we only selected the two clips when we created this reference composition, it will only affect the two clips that we kind of apply it to on the timeline. Whereas if you use an adjustment clip, it affects everything underneath this one was only made with two, so it'll only work with two. So in this podcast example, we can really quickly put something underneath. So I can grab these two, drag them up one, let's go to the generators, and then let's just go, I like paper. So we'll put paper underneath there, and there you go. You've got a real simple little template with our podcast, with our two little images, with our text, and we can put whatever background underneath we like. Absolute winner. Now that split screen effect is essentially the same, but this time we're gonna use three. So let me whip through that really quickly and I'll show you how I created that one. And then I'll show you how to save these into some power bins. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing two, three, four, you can do however many you like, the principle is the same. So we've got these three here. We want to create the same sort of thing. So we highlight all three on our timeline. They're all stacked up, as you can see. We right click. We create referenced composition. Let's just call this one split and create. We open it up by double clicking. Here we've got one, two, and three. If you need to know which one's which, the easiest way to do it is to grab media one and you can drag it up to one of the preview screens, media two, media three, so you can see what's actually going on. Now I need to do some cropping, so I'm gonna do shift and space and we'll search for crop and grab this little crop node which is super useful actually. I'll grab crop one and I'll put it on this media in three. And if we tick this keep centered, then we can simply lower this Y size to do a nice, simple little crop. Now I'm at 4K, so a third of that is gonna be 720. So now we know that's exactly the right size. We need to do the same thing so I can copy these. We'll do our same trick as before. Paste an instance and paste an instance once again. And then we'll just grab a transform on this one. And this one can move up a bit. So this can be our top clip, something like that. Transform on this next one. De -de -de, move this one down. You get the idea. This isn't a fusion tutorial, but I wanted to show you roughly how this was done. And then if we jump back to the edit page, we've got our nice, simple three clip split screen thing going on. The handy thing with this as well is we can move these out of the way. We can swap the orders, which will swap our top and bottom around. We can delete these if we want to from our timeline, put them on the timeline in a completely different order, something like that. Then click on our top one, highlight our split, right click, link to reference composition. And now we've got our three layer split screeny thing ready to go. All pretty cool. Now, none of that is all that useful unless you can save them for future use. And you can, of course, into a power bin. That's the last thing I wanna show you. Let's take a look. So in the media pool, you should see power bins. If you don't see power bins, you need to click on these three little dots 
and then click on show power bins. Power bins are simply bins or folders which are accessible between all of your different projects. So anything you put in there is nice and easy to access. I've got this split one here. So I'm gonna grab split, drag it into this master bin. And if we open it up, you can see I've already done one, a podcast, and I've got split in there. Now let's open a new project because there is a slight thing you need to be aware of. So here's a new project. I've got my three clips on my timeline ready to go. I can open my power bin and I've got split. So I'm gonna click it once so it's highlighted in red, select my top clip, right click, link to referenced composition, and there we go, we've got our split screen. Now, the thing you need to be aware of is as soon as you do that once, you're no longer actually using this split, this reference composition within the power bin. What's actually happened, if we open our standard master bin within the media pool, we now have a split within there. So it's copied that reference composition from the power bin into our main bin, which means if you want to make any changes, you don't open the one within the power bin, you open the one that's now within your regular bin. So if I wanted to change this kind of split screen on the timeline, I open split. Let's do something dumb just for quickly. Let's, I don't know, a bit of gain and lift and colors and stuff. And then go back to the edit page. And now we've made that change. So there you go, reference compositions. Incredibly useful. I forget they're there and making these videos made me realize just how useful they are. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the additional fusion nuggets in there as well. Let me know all of your thoughts and feelings down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you in the next one.